pleasant morning to everyone. It's a privilege to be here this morning, amen. The Lord has been good to us. So I want to say welcome to all of us who are here. Special welcome to, to my boss. By the way, he's also Ray's boss, amen. Amen. Uh, all the way from New York. And something happened to him. The last time I saw him, he was kind of bored. But now he has a full head of hair. You need to show me a secret, my brother. Amen. <laughs> a special welcome to you, Nancy. And uh, may God continue to bless us and keep us faithful to him. Amen. 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 Let's go as we have a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your tune of grace at this time. As we are about to open your words, we cannot read your word with clarity, with understanding, and be able to explain it without the aid of the Holy Spirit. So we are asking for your guidance this morning as I open your words, open our minds, and give us understanding. May we learn something that will draw us closer to you. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 For those of you who love titles, I have entitled the message, He Must Be a Somebody. Amen. Amen. He Must Be a Somebody. I don't know if you have ever heard that expression or you know somebody and uh, you know that they are VIP, a very important person. Somebody have told you, you must be a somebody. That makes you feel special, makes you feel important. Revelation chapter 1 gives us a scripture reading. I'll be reading from verse 1 and it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he said that signified by his angel unto his servant John to be a record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, amen, mm -hmm. to show the servants the things which must surely come to pass. And he said that signified by the angel unto his servant John. And John gave it to us, amen. Mm -hmm. And verse 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for a time is at hand. Of all the 66 books in the Bible, this is the only one that pronounces a blessing upon those who read it. It says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. The word revelation means unveiling. It's not a closed book. It's an open book. Amen? Yes. Daniel, the book of Daniel, is primarily a book of prophecy. Revelation is unveiling. It's unveiling what Daniel spoke in prophecy. Certain portions of Daniel were closed. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4, God said to Daniel, Shut up the book and seal up the vision for the time of the end. Now, there's, there's a difference between the time of the end and the end of time. We are now in the month of April. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Now, Thanksgiving is in November. Yes. Now, Mr. Farmer says to Mrs. Farmer that Tom will make a good Thanksgiving dinner. Tom is the turkey. Now, Tom hears Mr. Farmer say to Mrs. Farmer that Tom will make a good Thanksgiving dinner. When Tom hears those words in April, 
that begins the time of the end for Tom. Amen. <laughs> now when Mr. Farmer walks out on Thanksgiving morning or the day before Thanksgiving morning, and Tom sees Mr. Farmer coming with that hatchet or the axe, that is the end of time for Tom. So God said to Daniel, shut up the book and seal up the vision for the time of the end. Amen? We are living in the time of the end. And uh, uh, the revelation is an unveiling. It's an open book. It's not closed. Amen? So it is open for us for understanding. Now Revelation 1, 3 says, Blessed is he that reader, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now I want us to pay attention to the word here. Now there's a difference with this word in Revelation 1 and verse 3, than the word that is for use in here in Acts 9 and verse 7. Dr. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, was recounting the story of Paul's, or before he came Paul, Saul's encounter with Christ on the Damascus Road. And uh, Revelation 9, 7 says, And they that journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So Luke says that those who journeyed with Saul heard a voice, but they saw no man. Now, Acts 22 and verse 9 says, Now Paul was, ex was recounting his own experience. And here Paul says, And they that were with, were with me saw it be the light, but heard not the voice of him that spake to me. So in Acts 9, 7 it says that they heard a voice. Luke said that they heard a voice. And then Paul said they did not hear. <coughs> now there is no contradiction in this passage. Because the word for here in Acts 9, 7 and 22, 9 is, in the genitive case, it's aqua for net. It means to hear without understanding. Now the word for here in Revelation 1 and verse 3 is a different word. It's in the accusative case. It's aqua for net. It means to hear with understanding. The word aqua means to hear, and from the word for net, we get the idea of sound, megaphone, telephone, microphone. Here with understanding. So after you have listened to this message today, and you should have left this place, and somebody should ask you, well, what did Brother B spoke about? And you could not give an intelligent answer. It means you heard a loud noise. <laughs> but Revelation 1 3 says, a blessing is pronounced upon the reader or the one who is giving the message. And those who hear with understanding, Amen. and those who do what they hear. Amen? Amen? So in order to get the blessing, I just want us to hear with understanding. Amen? Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Now, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And God, John gave it to the seven churches. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Tyrantia, Philadelphia, Laodicea. We are living in this time period, the Laodicean period of the church. Amen? It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now I want to fast forward to Revelation chapter 5. What book did I say? Revelation chapter 5. It is a book sealed with seven seals. Now, Revelation 4, 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive power and honor and glory, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So God is worthy to receive power and honor and glory because he has created all things. For his pleasure. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 says, Paul says, because he has been called to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Among other things he says, 
and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which had been hidden God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. So God created all things for his glory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. That's why the Bible says in John 14, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was awesome. God. Amen. Amen. And verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. Amen. Amen. So Christ is the active agent in creation. Genesis 1, when God says, let us, in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God said, let us make man yes. in our image, amen, after our likeness. So Christ was together with God the Father. He is eternal as God himself, amen. amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Amen. But Christ said, He said, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. So I believe that we already established the fact that Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. He is not a God. He is who He claims to be. Amen. Amen. He is. The Almighty God. And by the way, I say that without any apologies. Amen? Amen. <coughs> because the Bible is its own defense. Yes, sir. Is its own authority. You don't need history to support the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the scriptures support history. Amen, brother. The Bible can stand on its own. And there is nobody bigger than God. He can take care of himself all by himself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And God don't need to apologize to anybody. We are not that important. <coughs> We are not that special because I discovered that we are nothing, we have nothing, and we give nothing. But on the other hand, God is everything, He has everything, and He gives everything. Amen. Amen. Do come. Beside Amen. Him there is no other. Amen. He is God all by Himself. Now, Revelation chapter 5, we're going to take a look at this chapter. The book sealed with seven seals. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. How many seals? Seven. Seven seals. So John saw someone sitting on a throne. And in his hand a book written. And on the back side of the book, it was not like the books that we have today, it was a scroll. And it was sealed up with seven seals. And John was taken in vision. Revelation 1.10, he says, and I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. So John was in vision and he was taken in vision to the very throne room of God himself. And he saw God sitting on a throne. And in his heart, a book written, sealed with seven seals, and somehow John recognized, John realized that that book is of importance. It contains the salvation of every human being living upon the face of the earth. It contains the salvation of the human race. And unless that book is open, then uh, the history of the human race is uncertain. Verse 2 says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? Who is worthy? A strong angel. It might have been Gabriel, I don't know. But there are some mighty angels, amen? amen. Yes. I read in the scriptures at one time, One angel, one night, slew the Assyrians, 185,000 with one little rope. Now, if that's not a mighty angel, well, I don't know, but John said, I saw a strong angel. Yes. So not even an angel in heaven was worthy to take the book and open it. Now, if I'm reading a book, um, I'm sure you would not want to take that book out of my heart, amen? Uh, and uh, more so if you see someone of importance. 
someone of elegance, someone of status, reading a book, then you would think twice to approach that person, uh, less to disturb them, and more to take that book from their hand. And John was concerned. Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And verse 3 says, And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereof. Now, now there, this is a drama that's taking place. A real lifetime drama, a real scene that is taking place in the throne room of heaven. Can you imagine the, the tense situation? It involves the destiny of the human race. What is contained in the book is very important, and John recognizes, John realizes this. And verse 4 says, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read the book, neither to look thereof. John was beside himself. The Bible says that John wept much. Now, uh, the New Testament scholars, uh, when they read into this passage, uh, this English translation does not give it uh, much thought, but, but, but what they have come upon is that when John was in a, in a frenzy, John began to weep because he was weeping for the salvation of souls. He was weeping unless that book is open. He was weeping so much so that, that his, his body was bent out of shape. His joints were dismantled. In weeping, just like when Christ who wept in Gethsemane, he began to sweat great drops of blood. You and I have never gone through that kind of agony. He was weeping and his body was bent out of shape. He was dismantled by weeping because he was concerned about the salvation of the saints. Amen. When last have you and I found ourselves weeping for a loved one, for a fellow saints, for a church member who have um, fell victim of sickness, uh, fallen to the, into the hands of the enemy? When last have we worked so for? the soul of a dying human race, for the souls of our neighborhood, for the soul of someone who could make it into the kingdom of God. John found himself weeping because no one was found to open the book. And by the way, may I remind us that the book of Revelation was not written without tears. And I suggest to us that it will not be understood without tears. Yeah. We must seek for it as of, of hidden treasure. Yeah. And the man who found the field, when he looked at the field, he discovered that there was something hidden in the field. And the Bible says that he went home and he sold all that he had. Amen. He sold everything <laughs> to buy that field. Because he knew that there was some treasure in the field. And we must search the word of God as for hidden treasure. Amen. Must be willing to give up everything. Make this word priority. Number one, first place, first preference in our lives. People who love God spend time with his word. Amen. 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 I say people who love God spend time with his word. Amen. 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 Psalm 19 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my, feet. unto my feet and a light unto my path. Without the word of God, we are in darkness. Yes, sir. And when we study the word of God, we have the treasure. Amen. Amen. We have the lamp. Without the lamp, you are void of fire. Amen. Amen. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen. And what the elder said unto me, weep not. The good news is, weep not. Behold, 
the lion of the tribe of Judah, the, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Weep not, John. The time of weeping is over. For behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, someone had prevailed. Someone of equal importance, someone of equal status, someone who is equal in power, equal in authority, yes. is able to take the book from the hand of him that sits on the throne and to open the book. Thank God that there is someone, amen, amen. that there is someone worthy to open the book and to loose the seals and to look thereon. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven heads and seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The lamb that had been slain. Now John saw two descriptions of this individual. Now, now, in order for this lamb, this line of the tribe of Judah, to take that book and open it, I've attended the message, he must be a somebody, amen? Mm -hmm. He must be a somebody. Because no ordinary person is able to take that book. Only one person was qualified yes. to take that book. One person who is, and who was, Fully man and fully God. Amen. Now Jesus is not half man and half God. Amen. He is very God and very man. He is a hundred percent God. The word verily means surely, surely. When Christ says verily, verily, I have told you, it means you have been warned. Yes. I have told you surely, surely. So he is very God. And he is very man. He's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man. The only person in the entire universe who is fully God and fully man is Christ Himself. Amen. And there was and he is no other Amen. who was able to take that book and look there and, and, and because the salvation of the human race it depends on the unsealing of that book. Amen. Your dusty and my destiny was in the balance. But thank God that there was somebody. He must be a somebody, what do you say? Amen. He must be a somebody to take that book. But John says the line of the tribe of Judah. Now the death, uh, first Peter 5, eight, uh, Peter tells us, be sober, be, be vigilant because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, now, I want you to know that the devil is a roaring lion. And by the way, that's all he can do. Amen. Hmm. He cannot touch any one of God's children. He can only make noise. Amen. If he comes to us, it's because God allows him. Amen. Or we invite him in. But he cannot touch any one of God's children. He can only make noise. Amen? Amen. But Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The one who has prevailed. Amen? But John also saw that he is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The proleptic sacrifice. When Adam sinned, when Adam gave up the homestead, Thank God that there was somebody keeping watch over the house. Amen. Adam was the federal head of the human race. Adam means mankind, the Adamic nature. Adam, the federal head of the human race. When Adam sinned, he gave up the, the homestead. He gave up the, the privileges that was given to him. He was not the owner. He was in charge of another person's goods. Amen. But he gave up the, the privileges that was given to him. 
and he, uh, he squandered, he lost it. And from the very foundation of the world, Jesus Christ agreed. Because he is a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was not ratified until Calvary. Amen. Christ, because God gave his word, he can never lie. So all those who receive forgiveness before Calvary receive forgiveness based on the promise that somebody is coming. Amen? Yes. And they were justified in the sight of God because God has promised. And he is not mad that he should lie. God can never lie. He can never make a mistake. He can never be wrong. Whatever he does, he's always right. Amen? Amen. So they receive forgiveness based on the promise. But after Calvary, God has a legal right. Amen? Well, I can imagine when someone was found to open the book, there was singing up in heaven, what he said. Mm. I can imagine when, when God finished a creation and he created the world in six days. And they, they, I'm sure you, you don't, you're not aware of this chord, you musicians. One, two, three, four, five, six, rest. They must have been singing, amen? One, two, three, four, five, six, rest. And we observe that rhythm even today, amen? Six days shall you labor and do all the work. But the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Amen. amen. The Sabbath does not belong to the Jews, it does not belong to the seven day Adventists. It does not belong to the Seventh-day Adventists. It is God's holy Sabbath. Amen. Amen. He invites us in to worship Him on His holy day. Amen. I thank God that it's exclusively His. It's good to come apart and rest a while on God's holy Sabbath. Amen. Amen. To be refreshed and to be revived, to be renewed, to be strengthened, Amen. so we can face another day. Yes, sir. Another week with assurance, with conviction, because submission is the day, is the evil thereof. We need power, we need strength, amen. amen. And by the way, the battle is not ours, the battle is the Lord's, amen. So when the devil comes knocking at your door, friend of mine, don't go and open the door. You send Jesus every time. And when the devil sees Jesus, he says, pardon me, sir, I'm in the wrong residence, amen. <laughs> he said, Jesus every time, because you and I are not much for the devil. But someone has prevailed amen. to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Amen. Thank God there must have been singing at creation, amen. 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 When Jesus was born as a babe in Bethlehem of Judea, there was a band of angels singing. Glory to God in the highest and in the peace, goodwill toward men. All heaven was rejoicing when Jesus on the cross said, It is finished. Heaven rejoiced. There was singing up in heaven. Amen. Amen. And when the book was opened, there was singing up in heaven. Thank God. Yes. There was a somebody who was mighty enough to open the book Amen. and lose the seals thereof. God is good, what do you say? Amen. We serve Almighty God, Amen. And by the way, if God be for you, who can be against you, Amen? Yes. Our God is a loving Heavenly Father. Yes. Amen. Yes, he and He came and took the book, verse 7, out of the hand of Him that sat upon the throne. And when He had taken the book, the four and four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having one of them, having every one of them, hearts, the golden vials of orders, which are prayers of the saints, and the song in his heart. I told you they were singing up in heaven. Yes. Oh, one of these days I'll be able to sing what you say. Amen. I'll be able to sing and shout. That